Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. Pretty excited today to talk about PyTorch. And so today we're going to talk about what is PyTorch. I know we've covered TensorFlow in the past and I definitely think we need to talk a little bit about PyTorch. So let's find out the basics of PyTorch and kind of where it fits into this deep learning framework all after this. And welcome back. Glad that you could join me today. If you find these videos useful or you want to find out more information around data science, data engineering, machine learning engineering, or just technology in general, make sure you click the subscribe button here and also hit the notification button so that you'll know every time a video is released and you can get your information around deep learning, machine learning, data analytics, and all kinds of topics that we're covering here. Today's question is all about what is PyTorch? So we've talked a little bit in the past, if you remember, about our ability to use TensorFlow and why TensorFlow really means, means a lot for data engineers and for machine learning engineers. But now I want to take some time to talk a little bit about PyTorch. It's a lesser known right now than TensorFlow, but it is another deep learning framework. So we could call this video yet another deep learning framework with PyTorch. But it is a Deep learning framework that's actually based out of a couple different other packages. So you may have formerly heard it as Torch. And so Torch was really research heavy. So think of, you know, a lot of applied research, a lot of researchers or scientific studies, and they were using Torch there to be able to uh, use their deep learning framework. So think of, you know, where TensorFlow kind of fits in, PyTorch as well. So PyTorch, the community for PyTorch is a little bit smaller. So think of, you know, not having as much documentation, but it also hasn't been around as long. So it's been around since January 2017. So we're just now over a year for PyTorch to be out there. But the cool thing about PyTorch is it doesn't have a lot of the complexity of TensorFlow, but it also, because it doesn't have that complexity, it's a little bit easier to use and a little bit easier to implement too. And so they're constantly, you know, adding to that community and adding to the packages, but it's a little bit easier to get started. So there's not as much to import, not as, not as many things to kind of get started and get set up like that you would see with maybe Cafe or uh, with PyTor with uh, TensorFlow. So another thing, so PyTorch is still relatively new. One of the cool things about it is there's not a lot of people out there that maybe have as much experience with that. So for people that are looking for consulting opportunities or you know being able to find something from a freelance perspective, this is a prime topic. So I just went out there and I looked and did a quick Google search on some of the uh, different consulting gigs and freelance gigs for PyTorch. And, and there's quite a number of those that are, that are just popping up. So this is something that, you know, if you're in the community and you want to be a part of an emerging uh, technology and a deep learning framework, then PyTorch is actually one that you can kind of get into. It's not even in 1.0 yet, so you could quickly become, you know, with, with time, an expert and be a part of that community as it's starting to grow. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I liked the fact that uh, when Pig had just came out and, you know, in the big data community, that's one of the things that I did. I pivoted and started, you know, playing around with it and started contributing to that community there so that I could kind of become an expert in it. It was really cool because, you know, there wasn't a lot of experts at that time, but it was, it was an opportunity to really get in on the ground level floor. So PyTorch is offering people that opportunity right now. I will say too, also for people that aren't looking for freelance, but you're looking for it. Okay. So it's been out for a year. Uh, it's another deep learning framework. There's a lot to choose from. What's the relative to, you know, career ended people. So like, is it being used in applications? You know, is there any kind of demand for it? Or is this just something that Thomas thought was cool and he'd make a video on? And actually, uh, I was looking, looking out there and right now, as of today, there's about 400 different job postings that they're looking for. And a culmination of all those job postings is putting, you know, think again, more for the machine learning engineer and the data scientist. A lot of those, a lot of those positions, the average is still over 135k uh, US dollars. So that's an amazing opportunity. It's still fitting in line. So we're starting to see that demand for PyTorch. And so this is just another thing for you to start looking at, start getting involved with. Um, I would recommend looking at it if you're if, if you're interested. Um, I'll do a video maybe in the future where we'll actually talk about maybe maybe I'll go with uh, TensorFlow versus PyTorch to kind of give you an indication of where I see that community, when to, when you should pick each one, and then kind of where they both fit in. So 
that's all I have for today. So just think about it. Go out there, check out uh, PyTorch. There's a, a lot of resources. So you can go to the documentation of the official site. You can kind of download it and start playing with it. There's a lot of different cool things you can do. Until next time, see you folks.